respected uh, Dr. Saraswat sir and other eminent panelists, Praveen and uh, distinguished gathering of industries and academia who are here. Very good morning to all of you. Let me just share a few of my thoughts on uh, the strategic sectors, defense and space and what uh, can be done to spur the growth of these industries uh, in India. So I'll be basically touching upon the defense and space sectors only and both deal in uh, strategic products and there are similarities as well as uh, differences. Both are growing at a good pace. Space uh, is at the cusp of a transition and a lot of uh, uh, development <coughs> in the number of satellites to be launched and the kind of services that are coming are seen in the near future. Both sectors in the past have struggled due to the technology Daniel regimes but both sectors have been able to break through in this particular aspect as well and space had to uh, cope with low volume high quality requirements that uh, aspect is also fast changing. Just give you a background on how space uh, uh, program has developed in India over the years. INCOSPAR was formed in 1962 which was the start of the Indian space program with the launching of uh, Nike Apache sounding rockets from the Turles uh, uh, rocket launching station in the southern Indian uh, city of Trivandrum and in 1967 satellite communication F station was set up in Ahmedabad 72 which were formed under DAE actually at that point of time and 72 space commission and department of space was set up and uh, later on many experiments like uh, SIGHT the satellite instruction television experiment with, which uh, demonstrated the capability of satellite communication to the masses and various other uh, experiments were also done which are a landmark or milestones in the development of the space program and at the bottom of the slide you can see the status of uh, space program today with about 101 spacecraft missions and 71 launch vehicle missions we have also been active in the commercial market though not in a big way because the commercial capacity offered by ISRO only is used and commercial capacity over 90 percent of the capacity is utilized for the national purposes Remaining whatever small capacity is available, <coughs> that only is used for uh, commercial exploitation and we have proud to say that about 269 foreign satellites of 52 countries has been launched by us, by Antris Corporation and various other uh, plans to support uh, the space program's development. Looking at difference, 1950s, 60s, uh, the setting up of OFB, uh, the major milestone of setting up of DRDO in 1958, which was followed up uh, in the 60 to 80 time frame. Uh, the wars that was waged has uh, spurred the uh, development of arms and uh, ammunition and the lion's share of India's defense equipment uh, were being supplied by Soviet Union at that point of time which also contributed to licensed manufacturing equipment wherein the Indian uh, defense industry got a feel of uh, what it is like manufacturing the defense equipment including aircraft. 80 to 2000 saw renewed effort to enhance uh, domestic capability and investments in DPSUs as well as in DRDO and uh, the current scenario of course uh, there is a lot of change in the recently a lot of interesting changes I will touch upon that in the coming slides and revised the DPP 2013 stressed on preference of indigenously developed and manufactured equipment uh, which again put the onus on the industry to design and develop uh, defense equipment in India. <coughs> you can see the budget that has been allocated utilization of budget in uh, in India for defense as well as space. The space is uh, still very small compared to defense uh, but you can see the growth as uh, the uh, space industry has doubled over this last 7-8 uh, years and with the arrival of Gaganyan the growth is supposed to be even bigger. So space industry is really started growing and probably it has now started becoming more feasible for industries to invest and come into space with the number of uh, missions are also uh, that is being projected facilitating industrial investment and industrial scale production. The market size in defense is uh, pretty huge and India featuring there at number 5 in the world in terms of defense spending, you are all aware of that. This is a huge market, the global uh, defense budget is about 1700 billion dollars compared to space but the space global commerce is about 350 billion dollars. So that 350 is uh, mentioned here, the market size in space out of which about uh, 268 billion dollars is what we call the, the satellite industry, the services that we give, the satellites that we manufacture, the satellite manufacturing industry and you can see the launch industry, the most visible uh, section of the space industry is only about 4.6 billion dollars uh, and uh, that industry is also expected to grow phenomenally because the number of satellites 
that are required to be launched in the next uh, 10 years uh, according to uh, Euro Consult is about 12,000. So this uh, really puts the onus on the launch industry to develop more and more capacity to cater to this huge demand that is coming up in the near future. And uh, ISRO and Antrix are also working towards this to position uh, small satellite launch vehicles and some, of, uh, some young industries are also in India uh, also aspiring to get into this uh, particular market which is also encouraging. The current state of uh, global satellite industry if you see <coughs> the growth you can see the pie chart explains the different segments of that industry. The satellite uh, services is dominating there you can see the money in satellite industry is in uh, services that is about 129 uh, billion dollars. The ground equipment is also doing well. You can see the launch industry actually with all these projections, it has a 19.5% uh, uh, downward growth or uh, it has come down by 19.5% in the uh, last year. This is mainly because the major revenue coming in the launch industry is from the big satellites and because of the small satellite constellations that were coming up. The big satellites uh, launches has been uh, temporarily you know, suspended by many companies, not many satellites are being developed in the year before this we have seen a 13% drop in the satellite manufacturing industry and that is reflected of course in the revenues to the launch industry as well. You can see the snapshot of India's uh, market position in sat satellite industry, of course I said earlier the spare capacity only is being utilized in India and we have about 7%, 7 uh, percent share in the satellite services, this is not counting the kind of services that are provided to the government and the security forces. The only the commercial exploitation of satellites in India, if you took a look at the Indian uh, contribution to that uh, $340 billion is about 7%. Launch services is still smaller because uh, we are only in the uh, micro nano uh, launching uh, segment and uh, not very active in the large satellites and soon probably with the enhancement of the launch program with more, more uh, big uh, launchers being commercially available, this revenue also will increase. As far as the remote sensing services are concerned. Uh, with the most of the services, uh, the high, uh, 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 the data products uh, revenue is in the uh, high resolution data and high resolution data in India, in Indian uh, remote sensing program is mostly used for the government and the security applications for so commercial exploitation, that area is also very small. But this uh, particular aspect is being addressed now and uh, with the capacity building in the industries and with more high resolution satellites being available, we can also be very active because geo <coughs> GIS services in India are also supposed to, are predicted to grow in a big way in India. And looking at some of the challenges, the private participation in high-tech defense and space manufacturing has always been a challenge because of the, especially in space, uh, because of the low revenues, requirement of high quality uh, requirements, etc., etc. There are no truly multinational corporates in India active in uh, defense and uh, space, so this uh, government is uh, taking uh, action uh, and policies are being brought in to see that uh, this is uh, changed and we can f probably soon see with the kind of activities that are taking place in India that uh, the companies coming up with the you know, uh, Indian uh, developed design and manufacturers of the IDDM it will be a game changer and uh, it should result in big companies coming up as a major defense supplies of the world. Absence of ancillary high tech companies who can give small systems like inertial systems or you know the uh, pyro systems for example or control systems etc are also not there so these are also areas where large number of satellites are required these industries will also have a lot of market to capture in the world and this is some area that industries can look at and this is uh, something that we are also looking at uh, by appropriate technology transfers largely dependent on import of high tech defense equipment now <coughs> in many areas availability of raw materials also an issue this is also being addressed carbon fiber is one of the major material that is used by space as well as in defense so this is uh, also uh, being addressed uh, with the putting up of uh, uh, plant Defense uh, manufacturing growth drivers, if you see, in defense you can see the, it, the market itself is a big driver, it's a huge market. There are supporting government policies and uh, economies, is, economies of scale can be achieved in defense. Technology transfer by DRDO to industries is happening. Geopolitical scenario is also conducive to defense manufacturing. Labor is uh, low cost labor, in the low cost labor also should aid in uh, spurring this uh, market forward. Uh, when you look at space, uh, there is definitely a surge in demand. It is uh, commensurate with the, not only with the kind of projections that ISRO has made, but also uh, in the, the, global, the growth in the global demand and many Indian companies looking at capturing that uh, global demands and then coming up and setting up. Many startups are there in space in India today. And uh, ISRO's projection is uh, 
minimum of about 18 to 20 satellites every year. That itself is a huge uh, jump from whatever has been achieved earlier. And 10 to 12 launch missions and uh, small sat constellations coming up in the world offers a great opportunity to supply satellites as well as subsystems. Most of technologies uh, are available in India in space. And ISRO is a storehouse of technologies and some of these technologies has to flow to industries to help them come into this uh, ancillaries and uh, subsystem business which uh, they can establish on a global scale. And TOT efforts are on today with ISRO as well as Antrix. And the emergence of new space is a new phenomena which will also spur uh, the growth of this industry. Of course, the supporting policies, IDDM, I said, uh, as I said, is a game changer in defense manufacturing. Preference to buy Indian and then provision for technology transfer, provision to allow foreign OEMs to select Indian production agency, mandatory offset requirements of 30%. These are all very, very supporting as far as the growth of the Indian industry is concerned and the FDI uh, side also there has been <coughs> great uh, uh, policy drivers as has been mentioned by my colleagues here earlier and uh, this is just a slide depicting the geographical distribution of defense companies you can see some of the geographical areas missed out uh, in this and that is probably another aspect that can be looked at by many many agencies looking at uh, uh, putting up their facilities because uh, state governments may come up with very very uh, supportive policies to uh, uh, be a contributor to this kind of a growth. Current uh, industry participation, if you look at the launch services, presently approximately about 70% work relating to launch vehicles are done by industries, but the main uh, important thing is that the industry does not have the technology, climb the steps to become a integrated system supplier, so that is not there. So though the hardware and lot of other systems are being supplied, an integrated end-to-end Multi-physics capability is not there with the industries today, which is a big worry. And realization of liquid engines, PS2 stage, etc. are also happening through industries uh, now and that capability is uh, going to be exploited uh, for the future uh, production of uh, PSLE and vehicles like that. And coming to satellite manufacturing, contribution in building of satellites is in the, only in the range of about 30 to 35 percent. Import content is very high, especially in the electronics uh, areas and realization of avionic systems, aggressive vendor development, etc. are happening and you, you might have read about the assembly and integration facilities of ISRO being opened out to uh, industries where they can participate as a, in a GOCO model to, and they, in the process they can also acquire the skill sets required to assemble satellites. See, the current industry participation <coughs> is uh, uh, in the systems and uh, subsystems area, mainly GOCO models and uh, we are trying to spur it up through more technology uh, transfers and some of the other technologies are in spin-offs and of course today you have a lot of uh, startups coming up which are making full systems like uh, uh, rockets and uh, engines etc and there are three or four companies active in India today uh, in this area uh, so that is also uh, worth mentioning in that, at this point. And if you look at the chronology of uh, space ecosystem development in India, we started in the 1970s with less volume and uh, there was no standardization, limited industry participation and there was uh, nobody willing to take any risks and it was a very difficult phase initially and in the 18 and 90s we saw the demand increase and uh, focus on developing capabilities in the industries, we saw investment uh, happening in the industries uh, and then building up the capabilities and uh, transferring more work to the industries, capacity building. You know, finally, today what we are looking at is uh, the self-sustainable industry where, you know, you can say that you make uh, a stage or a control system and the industry will be able to, and the configuration is given, in, the industry should be able to develop it further, design, develop, test, and then supply it as a product. This is what both defense and space will be looking at this point of time. And these are some of the glimpses of opportunities for private industries. PSLV production is already announced and discussions are going on with industries. And SSLV is another uh, uh, opportunity for industries that uh, Antis Corporation is uh, taking the lead to tie up with the industries and then manufacture it in a commercial manner. This has got many much commercial opportunities uh, considering the global growth of launch uh, services uh, that are happening today. And uh, of course, lithium ion technology, the sun sensor, solar panel technologies, etc. <coughs> lithium ion is already transferred to industries and it can be used to uh, integrate with the solar panels and of course the power management systems, etc. to make a whole power uh, system which can be delivered to any satellite manufacturer and uh, which can be integrated. That is a good opportunity to people who have taken up the lithium ion technology. Navic is uh, India's own uh, GNSS uh, services which is already the space segment is ready 
and uh, government is also coming out with the policies which says that uh, in future Navik will become mandatory in the transport vehicles. So that gives a huge opportunity for industries to use Navik and then develop these devices and supply to as OEMs uh, to various uh, users. Uh, and uh, this uh, looking at the volume of the market in the transport sector is a huge demand and we are also uh, seeing this, uh, I mean Nisro has also developed this Navic messaging receiver for the fishermen. Uh, you know you have read in papers that the fishermen who go to seas has this problem of crossing the international borders and getting arrested by other countries and put in jail and every day you read in papers that fishermen have been in jail for years together and then government is negotiating. So to solve this problem these devices will be given to the fishermen and uh, fishermen will know the international boundaries and the device will tell them when they are near the boundary so that they can stay within the boundary. This will also give additional weather information, the bad weather information so that the fishermen can take care of this. In addition to this, this will be integrated with the potential fishing zone information where the availability of fish schools will be transmitted and they can use it uh, to minimize the time uh, uh, spent in the sea for finding uh, the catch. Uh, this uh, devices has already been distributed uh, to many fishing communities and uh, experimental work is going on <coughs> and uh, this is another big opportunity where industries can also come in. Industries should come in and not also come in. They, they only should take that load because the demand will be in, uh, in less. India has got a very huge cost line about 7,800 kilometer cost line and very huge population of uh, fishermen. So this is another opportunity. And uh, uh, the satellite subsystems like uh, sensors uh, and also satellite platforms also, the small satellite platforms itself which uh, ISRO has developed uh, successfully and has proven platforms also in the pipeline uh, for transferring end to end to the industry. Say so roadmap if you see to for strategic industry ecosystem, identifying technologies uh, for commercialization is a very important aspect. Uh, and then uh, for this industry also should know the segment and they should also know where the opportunity lies and licensing and technology transfer is another uh, thing that is uh, that is also happening and training hand holding sharing of infrastructure certification uh, then buyback if possible whatever buyback is possible funding uh, for the industries uh, uh, for setting up their uh, uh, facilities etc and uh, this probably is a rough roadmap that uh, can be followed for uh, strategic uh, building a strategic ecosystem in India. <coughs> and key takeaways uh, will be the uh, defense and space is at the cusp of a transformational growth. You can see huge growth uh, both in defense as well as in space that is coming. And with the policies that are put in place, industries uh, are in a big, uh, with a big opportunity of uh, 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 utilizing this and then uh, having their business plans ready to come into this uh, strategic areas need to achieve self-reliance in these strategic areas is also there very strongly with the country. So these uh, industries will be definitely get uh, full support uh, from uh, both these segments, the space as well as defense. And ISRO and Antrix are actively working towards creating this uh, space ecosystem uh, in India. And uh, this conducive environment, this is a conducive environment for India to emerge as a defense and space manufacturing hub. Uh, thank you for your kind uh, hearing.